Hello everyone, this is my video about the Intel Arc A770's gaming performance. I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. The primary one being I wanted to test games that I really hadn't seen other people test. I decided to group games into multiple different categories to test out different aspects of the A770, different gaming conditions, you know. Firstly is the easy to run section. Games that are so incredibly lightweight and easy to run that even with the driver overhead of running in DX11 and DX10, that these should run incredibly spectacularly for basically almost any person. After that, we've got a DX12 Vulcan section, because that's obviously where this car performs best, a DX11 section, a ray tracing section, and a bonus game at the end. I also, ahead of time, want to apologize because this is my first time doing any sort of game benchmarking whatsoever. And so I tried my absolute best, but I definitely learned a lot through this process, this being my first time doing it. So if any of my results just seem kind of weird or inconsistent, I'm sorry. And I also run into another problem here because I can't just give you a bunch of numbers and stuff like that in a vacuum. I obviously have to compare it to something. But the thing is that I'm not a GPU reviewer. I don't just have a bunch of cards with similar performance just laying around I could test this with. The closest thing that I have to this A770 is the 6800 XT that's in my PC right now. But on doing research, the RX 6600, which this card is very clearly intended to compete with, does have about exactly half the performance of the 6800 XT. And so using that as a bar to compare the A770 against, I think is a good starting point. For my test bench, we're using the Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. So that means we're not CPU bottlenecking the A770 for sure. That Ryzen 9 is being cooled by a Noctua NHD 15 with 64 gigabytes of 3200 Corsair RAM on an Asus Tough X570 gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm running Windows 10 22H2 off of a SATA SSD. For the 6800 XT, I'm using Adrenaline version 22.5.1. And for the Intel card, I'm using 31.0.101.3490. Intel, your driver naming scheme sucks. Now for each game, I tested them at three different resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Now, it doesn't seem like 4K would make sense for the A770. I mean, this card clearly is not meant for 4K gaming for current games, but I promise you the 4K results will make sense once I get to them. Also, for all the games I tested, I put it on the medium graphics preset or around there, but with textures turned up to ultra. Now, if a game didn't have a medium preset, it just had a low and a high one, I just selected the high one. I'm looking at you, Final Fantasy VII Remake. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's get into talking about the numbers. First, we have Mega Man X Legacy Collection, a game so easy to emulate that its Steam system requirements are graphics cards from the GTX 700 series. On the 6600 XT, it's barely breaking a sweat running it at 4K. A770 runs it at 4K60 as well, although considering that percentage usage for a Super Nintendo game at 4K, uh, this is not a good look. Also something I found out during my testing is that MSI Afterburner with the art cards does not show you as much detail as the 6800 XT. It doesn't show you anything like power usage, core clock, memory clock, etc. Next up is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. A little bit heavier as it is 3D, but it's a card game simulator. And on the 6800 XT at 4K 120, this game runs without a hitch. And on the A770, it runs it at that 4K 120 as well. Next up is SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, rehydrated. Even heavier, being a 3D platformer, Unsurprisingly, again, 6800 XT absolutely crushes it at 4K 120. The A770 actually surprisingly holds up considering the game's in DX11. It manages to hold above 100 FPS at 4K, surprisingly. And, uh, oh. The water's not supposed to look like that. So that's one of the weird things about Ark sometimes, is that there's just graphical things that straight up do not work. Not even just bad performance. 
All right, let's move on to DX12 Vulcan games where the A770 really shines. For Final Fantasy VII Remake at 4K on the 6800 XT, I can get, like, in the 80s, mid-70s at the lowest, you can get a pretty good locked 4K60 experience here. At 1440p, unfortunately, you can't hit a locked 120. It dips a bit too much below that cap. And at 1080p, it's a locked 120 FPS experience with plenty of headroom. Now for the A770 at 4K, this thing performs around 60 FPS at 4K. Yeah, I'm about as surprised as you are. Now hanging around 60 is not the same as a locked 60, obviously. I think there's something a little bit weird going on here. This card should not be performing as close to the 6800 XT, even at the 3060 Ti optimistic levels. Now, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a bit weird because it used to have an enforced dynamic resolution scaler in the game, but that got patched out for any FPS cap above 60, so I don't think there's any shenanigans going on here. So either this game at 4K magically taps into the A770's power and full-on makes it a 3070 level card, or this game doesn't scale well for AMD cards. Now, in 1440p, the performance falls back in line closer to what I expect. The cards hovering around the mid-70s, much like the 6800 does, float in the mid-70s at 4K. I think it's pretty good considering the performance mode of the PS5 version of 7 Remake runs at around 1440p 60. And then at 1080p, again, we see the card struggle to lock a 120 FPS, although a little bit worse off than the 6800 at 1440p did. Next up is Devil May Cry 5. Now you'll notice that I'm running it in DX11 here in the 6800 XT instead of in DX12. I could not force this game to get into DX12 on my AMD card, and I don't know why. At 4K uncapped, we can see the card hovering around 150 to 160 during the intense battle scenarios. In 1440p, we can see the card hanging around like 300-ish FPS, a little bit above, a little bit below. Now here's something interesting that I've never ran into before. At 1080p, I actually run into a CPU bottleneck. The card hangs out below 500 FPS, and the GPU is not being fully utilized, hanging around the high 80s, low 90s. On the A770 at 4K, DMC5 runs around 90 to 100 FPS, meaning you get a rock solid, 4K 60, locked, nice. At 1440p, it hangs around 140 to 160 FPS. And at 1080p, it hangs around 270, 275-ish. A little above sometimes, a little below. All right, next up we have Doom 2016. Primarily, I chose this because, one, everybody's already tested Doom Eternal already. But two, it's a Vulcan game, but it's also older. So I want to see how a modern, good API with the card works with older games. Now, notably, this iteration of the engine, id Tech, has a 200 FPS hard limit on it. So the name of the game here is, can you cross that 200 FPS threshold, and how much headroom do you still have? On 6800 XT at 4K, you get a pretty nice locked 4K 120, and when you uncap the frame rate, you get almost to 200, although it hangs more in the 180 to 190 area. At 1440p, we hit the 200 FPS cap with plenty of headroom to spare, and at 1080p, we're using half the card at most. On the A770 at 4K, it hovers around 90 FPS, meaning we get a rock solid 60 locked. At 1440p, the card just barely kisses that 200 FPS threshold. And at 1080p, we're rocking a locked 200. All right, so this first DX11 game is Gundam Evolution, the multiplayer online hero shooter game. Another game with a 120 FPS engine cap. At 4K and the 6800 XT, it almost gets there. It hits it a couple times, but not exactly. But it does consistently hover above 100. At 1440p, this card should run it at a locked 120 FPS, but for some weird reason, this game has a glitch where it only runs at 100 hertz max in 1440p. I don't know why. And then at 1080p, it hits a locked 120, barely breaking a sweat. To be honest, for all the testing I did for this video, this game specifically just absolutely broke me. Just absolutely destroyed me and basically made me realize how bad losing half of your performance is. I always knew about the DX11 having, but actually seeing it in practice just completely changes it. And dear God, for the A770 at 4K, it depends on where you're at 
if you even get above 30 FPS. Sometimes it's in the 40s or almost touches 30 FPS, but in some of the interior areas, it dips into the mid 20s. At 1440p, the car just stays barely above 40, which doesn't seem right with how 1440p should scale. And in 1080p, it just barely crosses the finish line for a greater than 60 FPS experience. And for my second DX11 game, we've got Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This game has a 144 FPS limit, meaning like Doom 2016, that's the name of the game, is to hit that cap. On the 6800 XT at 4K, the card hangs around 100 FPS, meaning you could lock it to a solid 4K 60. At 1440p, the AMD card just barely kisses that 144 cap. And in a 1080p, bizarrely, the game doesn't lock to that 144 cap, despite clearly having the headroom. I'm not sure if this is some CPU bottleneck or something I'm running into. For the a770 at 4K, the game hovers around 50 FPS. Not ideal, but you, this is a more cinematic, slower-paced Metroidvania-style game. You could lock it to 30 and it would be totally fine. At 1440p, the game hovers around 80 FPS, so you can get a locked 60 FPS experienced, or near locked. And at 1080p, is that the same average frame rate? Oh no, it's a little higher, about like 5 FPS higher. Absolutely insane. And for ray tracing games, there's really only one game in my entire library that really pushes ray tracing to the limit, which is Bright Memory Infinite. This is one of those graphical showpiece games on PC, but it's actually fun to play. What I did was I went into the graphics menu, turned up the ray tracing to highest, just to really flatten out those rasterization differences and seeing how much of a difference the superior ray tracing performance the ARC cards have. And tested at 1440p and 1080 because literally neither of these cards can play it at 4K at any reasonable frame rate. 6800 XT at 1440p hovers around 60 FPS in this pretty intense battle scenario. I consider that pretty good, considering the ray tracing is just absolutely hammering those array accelerators. At 1080p, this card actually hovers in the 70s, 80s, surprisingly, so you can get a locked 60 FPS. At 1440p, the A770 hangs around 40-ish FPS. Very surprising. And then at 1080p, it hangs around 60. This is actually kind of a big W for the A770. A 20% performance difference between the card that has, what, plus 50%, maybe even double the rasterization performance at 1440p, and that gap opens up a little bit more at 1080p. I think ray tracing right now just seems like a dumb gimmick, but I have to give Intel credit. They really did a good job with the ray tracing for a first generation product. For the final game, I just want to throw in a little bonus, a DX9 game, Black Mesa. At 4K on the 6800 XT, the game almost gets you over the finish line for a locked 120 FPS experience. At 1440p, the game bizarrely doesn't really gain that much more FPS, hanging around the 140 area. I don't know what's up with this game specifically. It doesn't seem to be utilizing the GPU all that well, and I don't think it's an entirely a CPU bottleneck. Because in 1080p, this game could get up into the 220s, 230s, depending on the scenario. All right, let's see how it looks on the A770. I think it's actually a perfect fit for this kind of card, because while it is not a AAA... Where is the game? Where is the game? So it turns out with Arc that the menus and UI load, but the actual 3D graphics that you can see do not load. The game doesn't crash. You can still hear the game going on in the background. I'm getting hit, but I can't see anything. I tried changing the resolution. That didn't work. I tried changing the full screen mode. It even tried windowed mode, and that didn't work. Unfortunately, I can't show you this legitimately great game running on Intel's first generation of graphics in such a long time. And it's kind of a bizarre microcosm, worst case scenario of all of Alchemist's problems right now. So after all of that, what's my conclusion? 
I don't feel like I've been as hard on Intel as maybe some other reviewers have been. If they're like, this is unacceptable. If AMD launched something like this, everybody ripped them to shreds, blah, 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 blah. But this is obviously a first generation product with no drivers. Let's chill out everybody. But even coming from me, I genuinely and honestly cannot recommend these graphics cards for anybody who wants to do gaming. And I'm not even gonna put any caveats on it, like, oh, if you don't have Reaper on your motherboard, you shouldn't get it. If you're playing games that aren't DX12, you shouldn't get it. All right, let's say you're looking into getting a GPU upgrade right now, and you're playing DX12 games only at the moment, for how few of them are, there are. Okay, so you buy an A770, and then maybe three months, six months down the road, you find a game that you absolutely fall in love with, but it's DX11 only. Are you gonna be mad at yourself for buying an A770 for a game later doesn't play to its strengths and you should have bought a 3060 or a 3060 Ti instead? Well, who knows what your game taste or what you're playing is gonna change in the future. Yeah, this card can still run those DX11 games, but you're not getting the performance that you're paying for out of it. Now, I think the only thing that's making these A7 cards not fall completely flat on their face Current GPUs just being so extremely overpowered compared to the generation of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games that currently exist that you can literally lose half of your performance and in a good amount of games, you can still get a decent 1080p 60 experience out of them. Now in regards for future utility, right? Oh, future games are gonna be using mostly DX12 anyways. I don't really see it going all that well either. Considering the system requirements we see on games like A Plague Tale Requiem or Silent Hill 2 Remake, that I could absolutely see the A770 just get absolutely eaten alive by PS5 Series X only games in a year or two. And that's why I think the 6800 XT to A770 comparison is actually kind of unintentionally perfect despite the performance disparity. Because I feel like the 6800 XT is the real performance floor going forward for next generation games. That if you wanna play these games at equivalent resolution to the console counterparts, but at 60 instead of 30 FPS, the 6800 XT is gonna be the card that you'll want for that instead of this. I actually found reviewing this card to be kind of frustrating, not just because I haven't done any benchmarking before, but just due to the performance disparity between APIs or even resolutions within this same API, that it feels like for every game I start up and every resolution I test, it feels like I'm putting a completely different graphics card into my machine. At 1080p in DX12, this card feels like a 3060 with like a bad cold. But then at 4K in DX12, it feels like a 3060 Ti. Now that is kind of a bad performance drop off, but it's even worse in DX11. Like going from 4K in DX11 to 1080p, the card just falls off a cliff. But then you go from like 4K, where you're actually kind of surprised that it's holding up as well as it is. And then you go down to 1080p, and it feels like the card is like struggling to hold on sometimes. And then there's just the overall bugs with the card. Now throughout all of my performance testing, I have this kind of sneaking suspicion. I think the GPU boost on the card actually is kind of broken. At 4K, I feel like the GPU boost works perfectly fine. For 1440p and 1080p, the card is not boosting as much as it should. And I don't think that's entirely driver-based. I think the actual boost algorithm of the GPU just for some reason does not work as well at 1080p and 1440. But on the flip side, I can really see this card's potential. When this card is good, it's really good. Playing Devil May Cry 5 at a locked 4K 60 or an uncapped 90 to 100 hertz on a VRR display is actually kind of an incredible experience considering the money that you're spending on this card. If Intel could take the performance that I'm seeing from Devil May Cry 5 at 4K and applied it to every other resolution and API through driver updates, this would be a really killer card. But unfortunately, I think by the time Intel gets the drivers to a state where they can actually get that performance, they're not gonna be selling this A-series lineup anymore. 
But that's still not the end of exploring this lineup of cards. I mean, you've still got productivity performance, more obscure games, so maybe some stuff that's even older, um, just arc control as a graphics panel in general. But that's all content and videos for another day. I spent an entire weekend doing all of those benchmarks. So I'm kind of tired. So I'm just gonna go to this couch over here, just out of frame and take a nap because I'm so done with all of this. So anyways, guys, that's it for the video and uh, have a good day.